it took my father away. Knowing that you've lost someone, I think it's one of the most significant things to ever happen uh, to a person. It takes you to a darker place where you might not think you'll be able to get out of. I always played rugby because my father was a rugby player. That was one of his passions because uh, you know he was the president for the Singapore Cricket Club and a member there and a former player there as well. So I pretty much grew up there as well. So I, I was always surrounded by rugby. I believe I was told, so my dad eventually told me, it would have been sometime in 98, if I'm not wrong, when he told me, actually, um, I've got a growth on my, on my tongue. Um, they've determined that it's, it's, it's cancerous, so I'm gonna have to go in for surgery to, to remove it. So I was like, wow, okay. Well, this is, this is a whole, this is a whole nother game. It's, this is like life and death now. You know, when you hear news like that, it's very emotional. Um, and you try to be this, this young man you know, at 16 or 17, you, you, you think you can hold it together, but you can't. My father was, you know, my dad's six foot three, over 100 kilos. Yeah, he's a big man, you know. He holds himself very well. But to see someone like that become very emotional and, you know, and, and actually cry, that got me. He said everything's going to be okay. When they found it early, they're going to get it. But I didn't know anything about cancer then. This is the disgusting part about cancer. You think you may have found it, and you think you may have got it, and you think you may be clear of it, but it's not the case. Cancer spreads. So this happened very quickly, you know? It was only basically within a, a two-month period, from hospital to home to hospital again, and then the transition from being in a ward in a, in a room to him struggling to breathe to then get taken down to ICU in critical condition, that's it. That's pretty much, they've pretty much stamped the file and said, it's around the corner. So basically my mom was already saying goodbye when he was in ICU just to tell him to, to let go. Stop fighting the fight, we're okay, we'll be okay. So we always used to say, just don't worry. Don't worry too much, we're, we're, you know, don't worry about us. And I think that night, yeah, everything started to slow down, heart rate slowed down. Um, Breathing slowed down, and and he passed away that night. So if I ever if I ever met my dad again or had a chance to ever say anything to him, it would be I love you. Very simple, I love you. You know, at that time, 17 years old, you, I don't think you really know the, the meaning or the power of of love. Like you lose someone forever, as in they pass away, and you never get this. There's an undying love in the memory, but you'll never be able to like share any more moments with them. You'll never be able to say I love you or hear that back from them. That's it. My life changed forever and I would then have to step up and, 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 and do things now. Right after dad passed away, it was more, uh, more of the emotional son now becoming, you know, again, the man of the house and helping mom get through uh, the dark times. Kind of being a father figure for my younger sister, so to speak, the big brother. What I saw my dad go through, I do not wish upon anyone. My advice to people is, yeah, go, go and have a screening. And even if it's not free, <laughs> go and get screened. Even if to pay a little bit. I, my, my, my ethos in life has always been that, uh, you know, our health, there's no price tag on health. I do believe that, of course, as, as I've gone into this, there's also an added responsibility for me to do more. The influence I can have on things. I wanted to, to contribute to the fight against cancer. There is an emotional attachment to it already. You know, something that's affected you. You can lose a fight to a certain extent, but there is still a war going on, and if we are still alive to help fight it, 
that's our next responsibility. Mm-hmm.